Hi. <laughs> Hello. Kapow Radio Show. It's Monday, August 1st, 2016. What happened to July? It just came and went. The 4th was just last week. I know it. I don't I don't know. It it went by fast. It's crazy. Cuz the earth is flat. <laughs> The earth is flat, so the sun doesn't rise, it doesn't set, it just stays the same. It just hovers. So the time doesn't change, so Mm-mm. it's, yeah. Earth is flat. Yeah. Because I saw it on YouTube. So it has to, to be it. true. It has to be true. And and, and they, mis- they they take, you know, Isaiah. Mm-hmm. Isaiah said it. Let's not read the Bible for the Word of God, oh. for what it is. Uh-huh. By all means, let's just find stupid theories to try to back up. It takes scripture out of context and make a pretext out well, of it. The Bible's archaic. I know. Right? Yeah. We got to go with the times. We got to go flow. Because truth is relevant to what it is, it is today. It is. It, it, the, the world's like a, it's like a plate. Yeah. It's not, it's a it's circumference. It's like a plate. Not Wrong. Like a ball. <sighs> you know, it's I don't want. that time is gone. It's going faster. It is going faster. It's because the earth is flat. <laughs> um, okay. Before I rant and rave about that stuff. The last of the installment of Social Masonry, Part 6, I believe. Who knows? I might come back next week and talk about Part 7. Who cares? <laughs> but I think this is going to be the end of it right now. I don't know. But this is the coup de grace. This is the learned elders of Zion, the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. This is the most satanic Bible you will ever you'll ever read. It's mm-hmm. unbelievable. All the other documents we've talked about arrive from, from, this. from this. Yeah. Now, if you haven't heard the rest of the series, at least go back and listen to the one we did two weeks ago on the Sanhedrin, mm-hmm. the haters of Christ. This is where we personally believe it all originated from. Sure. I mean, there's always been God haters. Satan's always been here from the beginning, mm-hmm. but there wasn't a Christ hater until Christ. Right. So they do everything in their power to destroy that name. I don't mean the name Jesus or the name Yeshua. But what it stands for. Yes. The power behind that. And that's who these fellows are. Mm -hmm. uh, They originated out the first century Jews, the Sanhedrin. They're still around. When I say Jews, I explained that two weeks ago. I'm not talking about people of Jewish descent that are just walking around Jerusalem, you know, driving a dump truck or whatever they do. I'm talking about these very elite Jewish bankers, Mm -hmm. the The globalists, yes, that have sold out to Satan. Once they rejected their Messiah, they sold out to Satan. There's only, there's only two, Mm -hmm. you know, they only serve mammon or, or God. Right. So they sold out. That's who their God is. So when we read some of this stuff and they mention God and they mention their Messiah and their Lord and stuff like that, they're not talking about Yahweh, the Mm -hmm. God you serve. They're not talking about Jesus the son of God. They're talking about Lucifer, right? That's, That's right. who they serve. So you got to understand that it's a very satanic, satanic, mm-hmm. horrible, horrible document. Um, we can't read it all, obviously, because it's too big. Mm-hmm. We suggest you go to, uh, if you want to get it, one place to get it is online is educate hyphen yourself.org. Educate hyphen yourself.org. And you can read the whole protocols of zion on there and that's pretty good there all right all right you got anything to say before we get started Mm-mm. okay let's go for this before we read some of these quips i we have to give a history okay a, a brief history but it's a lot so we're just going to make it as short as we can all right uh the protocols of the learned elders of zion it's a document which should be read by all it really should so go by go to educateyourself.org and read this it really is beneficial mm-hmm. just i mean it's like it's like getting into the mind of satan yeah it really is it's like mm-hmm. reading a real satanic this is his bible agenda mm-hmm. right here and then you'll understand it then you'll understand why i make fun of flat earth people i make fun of people who chase pokemon i make fun of stupid people that do stupid things whether they're criminal or not, this is you'll understand why mm-hmm. once you read that. Until you read something like this, you're you're just you're blinded. You're mm-hmm. just part of the system. Right. You don't you're not going to understand. You know, so ah, I get frustrated because you can only talk so much. I know. Okay, it's a document it should be read by everybody. No other single document provides us with such a clear understanding of why the world 
is gradually moving towards a one-world government controlled by an irreproachable hidden hand. Now, in the protocols, we're given clear insights as to why so many incomprehensible political decisions are made in both local, national, international politics, which seem to continually work against the favor of the masses and in favor of the vested interest of the banking slash industrial cartel, the global power elite. You'll understand that. The average person normally reacts with outrage and horror today at the very suggestion that there may be a conspiracy as grand as the protocols. But the average person has absolutely no information on which to base his or her opinion. The reaction to to such exposure of this ancient conspiracy is merely a pre-programmed Pavlovian reaction created and instilled by the very perpetrators of the same ancient conspiracy. And today, very few will dare speak above a whisper of that all-encompassing oppression of mankind. I still know where I'm at. (laughs) It is extremely rare today to find information about the ancient conspiracy due to the mass censorship of the printed word and the unwillingness of the general population to consider as a possibility something which they have been brought up since birth to see as outrageous and ridiculous. Each generation is born into a world of greater and greater censorship and illusion. All right. So we'll try to keep an open mind about what's going on. A little bit of the history of the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. In the interest of keeping this explanation brief, okay, there's only a couple of highlights here, but there's a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot more history to it. Okay. Um, In 1884, there was a daughter of a Russian general. Her name was Justine Glinka. She was in Paris, obtaining secret political information to be communicated back to Russia. She employed a Jewish assistant, Joseph Schwarzt, a member of the Mizriam Lodge in Paris. Schwarzt offered to obtain for her a document of great importance to Russia on payment of 2,500 francs. She forwarded the French original accompanied by a Russian translation of the Tsar Uh, to the Tsar in St. Petersburg, but it was suppressed by those under obligation to wealthy Jews. The Tsar never received it, and Glinka was eventually banished to her estate in Orel. Glinka gave a copy to Alexis Sokhutin, who showed the document to two friends. One was a professor. name was Nihilus. The former had it printed and circulated privately in 1897. The second, Nihilus, published it for the first time in Russia in 1901. In a book entitled The Great Within the Small, at about the same time, a friend of Nihilus brought a copy to England where it was apparently deposited in the British Museum on August 10th, 1906. All right? Now, but the British Museum denied ever having received a copy of the protocols. Mm-hmm. But this is, this is some of the story. Meantime, through Jewish members of the Russian police, minutes of the proceedings of the... the uh, The Congress, we're just going to call it the Elders Congress or whatever, in 1897 had been obtained and these were found to correspond with the protocols. In January 1917, Nihilus prepared a second edition revised and documented for publication, but before it could be put on the market, the revolution of March 1917 had taken place. And anyway, uh, this other guy had ordered the whole edition of Nihilus' book to be destroyed. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In 1924, Professor Nihilus was arrested. He was imprisoned and tortured. He was told by the Jewish president of the court that this treatment was meted out to him for having done them incalculable harm in publishing the protocols. Released from a few months, he was again led before the um, the tribunal in Moscow. He was confined. Uh, he died in exile at the district of Vladimir in 1929. So a few copies of Nihilus' second edition were saved and sent to other countries where they were published. In Germany, in England, uh, in France, let's see, um, in the United States Mm -hmm. by several companies. Later editions appeared in Italian, Russian, uh, Arabic, even in Japanese. The protocols gained widespread recognition upon their translation into English. They soon became notorious. Esteemed newspapers such as the Times and the Morning Post, uh, who had a Moscow correspondent, by the way, said that Victor E. Marsden was responsible in 1921 for the translation um, that was used in this dark document. I think that's what they said. Mm -hmm. 
that covered he covered the story in numerous articles, much to the chagrin of world jewelry, who immediately began to propaganda bandwagon rolling. They not only denied that the protocols were a Jewish plot, but also that there were uh, any plot whatsoever. The latter was quite clearly false to all educated men and women of the time. Probably so much money and energy were never before in history expended on the effort to suppress a single document. The period of 1920 marks the end of the time when the Jewish question could be impartially, openly discussed in public. Mm. Interesting, right? Um, and there's many attempts to discount the protocols as a fraud. What we do know is these things are well under 100 years old. Mm-hmm. They surfaced in the late 1800s. Right. The, you know, so they're, they're old. It's nothing that's new. Mm-hmm. And what's amazing about them is when we read the stuff now, you're going to see it happening. Right. So whether it's a fraud, mm-hmm. whether it's real, I don't know, but it's predictive. Right. It has predicted a hundred years ago exactly what has been happening over the centuries Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what i i believe is coming to fruition today i believe the kingdom of the learned elders is upon us yeah and even albert pike had visions of all this stuff did he i didn't know that i did not know that Mm -hmm. of the the protocols of these things that are happening within from from the protocols like the wars and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and everybody knows who albert pike is he was a masonic philosopher the big guy uh so anyway a lot of people it's a fraud they think it's a fraud but the fact remains that there's no documentary proof that the protocols uh are say what they are but allegations of forgery and fraud have dogged their public history however despite many opinions to the contrary the documents have never been categorically proved to be fraudulent Uh, besides why would an, an anonymous document be forged doesn't make sense plus there's a lot of work into this and it's Mm -hmm. too it's too satanic just to have one person come up with this stuff. Oh yeah, it's too good. Mm-hmm. This this it's this the same spirit. Yes, that's pervasive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, because the people that that have written about this stuff, like Pike and uh, Al- Allison Bailey, they've all used um, spiritism to bring yeah. this stuff forth. So it's the same satanic. Mm-hmm. It's it's that same serpent, and it is a serpent. Mm-hmm. That intertwines. Yep. Yeah. And so this is the same serpent that actually possessed that Sanhedrin in the first century. That's right. Those guys that those Jewish court, those Jewish religious leaders, political slash religious leaders who crucified their God, killed mm-hmm. their God. It's those guys right. who were Satan possessed and, and it carries on. It's mm-hmm. been carrying on for thousands of years now. Yep. Coming to fruition. And their whole goal is to destroy Christianity mm-hmm. in, in humanity. Because they serve another God that has given them everything on this world if they Mm -hmm. bow down and worship me. That's right. And they've taken that. And then all their little minions that work under them have taken that. Sure. Okay. So the, the, um, the fact also remains that since the apparent publication of the protocols, world events have unfolded exactly according to the description. That's what we just said. Surely this would be proof enough that a plan such as the protocols exists because they have, they have unfolded. Now, um, in 1921, February 17th, 1921, Henry Ford, the maker of the Ford automobile in an interview published in the New York world, put the case for the protocols tersely and convincingly. Here's what he said. He said, the only statement I care to make about the protocols is that they fit in with what is going on. They are 16 years old at the time. They were 16 years old and they have fitted the world situation up to this time. They fit it now. Mm -hmm. So 16 laters after their discovery or their publication, guys like Henry Ford were already seeing it come into play. Right. Now, a hundred years later, I mean, we're, we're there. Mm -hmm. We're there because everything that would have stopped it didn't. Right. And that's Christianity. Mm-hmm. This phony baloney Christianity out there is the only thing that could have really stopped it. Right. And it didn't. Mm-hmm. It didn't. Because people would rather buy into this nonsense and buy into the world than to actually stand up for follow stand. God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it, it, they couldn't stop it. Okay. 
Uh, so we're gradually being mobilized into a new world order. The one world government is being facilitated by the gradual movement of nation states into larger power blocks, such as the European Union and NAFTA, etc. The United Nations, the United Nations has come into power as a global police force under the excuse of being a protector and a benefactor of the world, exactly as outlined in the protocols. The Jews have symbolically returned to Palestine. As the state of Israel now exists, as the official universal homeland of all Jews, despite the vast majority of Jews having no racial connection with Israel whatsoever. All right. The Protocols of the Learned Elders of Zion is the most blatantly satanic document in world history. Mm. I absolutely, I absolutely agree with that. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're all the same, but this is, this is the original. Mm -hmm. This is just, this is the pen of Lucifer. Right. It systematically lists all the steps that are necessary to establish the new world order and its ultimate leader. It is obvious that these plans for the establishment of the new world order are so brilliantly conceived and written, and they are, that can only be the work of supernatural guiding spirits through automatic writing. Yep. I absolutely agree with that. Yep. There's no way, you know, Machiavelli or you know a single person did this. Mm -hmm. There's no way. They're broken down in, in these five major categories. A blueprint for world domination, the advent of a Masonic kingdom, a king of the blood of Sion, the dynastic roots of David. Remember, that's their Antichrist. That's right. The king of the Jews is not our Jesus. Their king of the Jews will be the real pope. Exactly. Not the pope, not a Catholic pope. He'll be the real pope. Mm -hmm. so they, the world ruler will be a patriarch of an international church. Wow. A patriarch, not a matriarch. A patriarch. That's what their government is. So I know Hillary and everybody's like, she made history. She's the only woman in the ring. In their mind, it's patriarchal. Mm -hmm. Just something to keep in mind. So let's look at some of these uh, quotes. Here's just some quotes uh, that become familiar with the type of plans the protocol set forth. Now, it allows us to move into a more accurate, accurate understanding of why we believe so strongly that the planned third world war is almost upon us. Mm. Remember, the protocols are at least 100 years old. Keep that in mind. So we're going to talk about terrorism a little bit. Okay? I just finished reading Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare written by Paul and Linda Villanueva, and I highly recommend it to all Kingdom Against Powers of Wickedness radio listeners. This book is about saving your marriage from destruction. It is a true and vivid account about adultery, witchcraft, curses, spells, and evil spirits, all attempting to dismantle and annihilate lives. This is an excellent training manual for building a stronger marriage by exposing the tactics your enemies use against you. Ultimately, the book glorifies the transformational power of God through submission to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is a good thing. Demons in My Marriage Bed from all online digital retailers, such as Amazon.com and Apple iBooks, FifthHookMedia.com. That is F-I-F-T-H-O-O-K Media.com. Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, changed the way my spouse and I conduct spiritual battle and has increased our alertness level to the tactics of Satan. Please do not be fooled that such things cannot happen to you. Rather, get prepared and become the spiritual warrior needed to overcome in these perilous times in which we all live. God bless you all. In protocol number seven, Worldwide Wars, paragraph six. It says, in a word, to sum up our system of keeping the governments in check, we shall show our strength to one of them by terrorist attempts and to all. If we allow the possibility of a general rising against us, we shall respond with the guns of America or China. To get that. If they allow the possibility of an uprising, mm -hmm. they'll respond with the guns of America or China. Who's the pawns of the global elite? This nation. Mm -hmm. Always has been. There's uh, another one. The secret societies were planning as far back as 1917. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's from another book called Behold a Pell Horse. I'm sorry. The secret societies were planning as far back as 1917 to invent an artificial threat in order to bring humanity together in a one world government, which they call the New World Order. Hmm. Back As far back as 1917, a universal threat. Guess who that is right now? 
Islamic terrorism. Exactly. And man, they're really stepping it up. The month of uh, the month of July last month, you can't oh, even keep yeah. up. Mm-hmm. You can't even keep up with all the violence and terrorism and attack. I mean, that's why their kingdom has come. It's it's time, folks. Mm-hmm. That's why this is the last uh, Kapow show. I'm going to go do some other things before the end. I'm not going to have the world end. See, it's amazing. Around this time, too, what, a year later, and was the end of World War One. So yeah. it just, all of this all fits in. All this stuff is going on. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's some more uh, terror stuff. Okay, it says, um, the Gentiles are a flock of sheep, and we are their wolves. And you know what happens when the wolves get hold of the flock. There is another reason also why they will close their eyes. For we shall keep promising them to give back all the liberties we have taken away as soon as we have quelled the enemies of peace and tamed all parties. It is not worthwhile to say anything about how long a time they will be kept waiting for this return of their liberties. And that's from Protocol 11. Yeah, the totalitarian state. Protocol 11. Mm -hmm. Think about um, our Patriot Act. Mm-hmm. Yep. After nine exactly. eleven, all the liberties we lost. Think about what, uh, well, Hillary and her ilk want to do with um, our firearms. Mm-hmm. All these liberties, and of course, this is global. So does all these other nations. You know, apparently, uh, a lot of countries used to be armed, and and have ta- had their arms taken away from them, so they can't fight back. Yeah, and Ben Franklin said, "Those who would give up their liberties." Um, what does it say? In order to advance to, um, oh, I wish I would write this better. Safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Yes. Those who would give up their, yeah, liberties for security deserve mm-hmm. neither. Uh, so make no mistake about it. This war on terrorism is leading us straight into totalitarianism. That's what mm-hmm. it's about. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, how about just one more on terror? How about uh, still more words from the protocols on terror? We must create ferments, discords, and hostility. By our intrigues, we shall tangle up all the threads which we have stretched into the cabinets of all states by means of the political, by economic treaties, or loan obligations. In order to succeed in this, we must use great cunning and penetration during negotiations and agreements. But as regards what is called the official language, we shall keep to the opposite tactics and assume the mask of honesty and complacency. In this way, the peoples and governments of the Gentiles, whom we have taught to look only at the outside whatever we present to their notice, we still continue to accept us as the benefactors and saviors of the human race. Says a lot right there. Mm -hmm. Um, Turning humanity upside down with their beautiful and powerful rhetoric. You know, I think of Obama. You know, people's like, what a great speaker he mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. Or was, or is. I mean, he just spoke so well compared to like George Bush or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, couldn't put a sentence together. Right. Uh, great rhetoric. In protocol number 13, he says, they say, when we come into our kingdom, mm-hmm. see how they talk? Yeah. When we come into our kingdom, you think this is the Antichrist kingdom, folks. Our orators will expound great problems which have turned humanity upside down in order to bring it at the end under our beneficent rule. You get it? They're going to be talking about global warming. Exactly. They're going to be talking about terrorism. They're going to be talking about our economy. They're going to be talking about crime. They're going to be talking about race Mm -hmm. wars. They're going to turn it upside down. And how many times do we talk about that? How everything is upside down and... Oh, gosh. Crazy. Yeah. I just posted a bunch of transgender stuff on Facebook. That's just so bizarre. Mm-hmm. It just makes no sense. And so now you're looking for these this, this, these benefactors to come in. Okay. It goes on and says, who will ever suspect then that all these peoples were stage Manage. Get that. Stage man. This is written a hundred years ago. Who will ever suspect that all these peoples were stage managed by us according to a political plan, which no one has so much as guessed at in the course of many centuries. That's the 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 authorities or the power of the air. Yes. The prince of power of the earth. These are not human elements. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
if they are human, they're they're demonically possessed from generation to generation to generation since the Sanhedrin. Yeah, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and the um, wickedness of the spiritual wickedness. Mm-hmm. That's the influence here. Mm-hmm. It's that shadow government that you always hear about. But it's everywhere. It's not just politics. It's our education. It's our religion. Mm-hmm. It's everything. Because that's what they want to intro- infiltrate. It's all those things. Everything. That, but that's it's amazing. A hundred years ago, they used the term stage managed. Mm. What do we keep saying about this current political cycle? Mm-hmm. It seems like a soap opera. Every day. A reality there, show. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's some new bombastic finding. Emails are released. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then the next day, oh, Trump tweeted something negative about, you know, fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, we just saw yesterday Ivana Trump. Is that her name? Ivanka or Ivana? Ivanka? I don't know. Ivanka. Her and Chelsea. Best friends. Our best friends. Best friends. Every day it's drama Mm -hmm. and it's stage managed. None of this, none of this crap is real. Mm Mm-mm. And it's to overwhelm us. It is. To the where, to where you're reading it or you're, you're hearing it. And these things are so outrageous that you just want to give up your hand, you know, raise your hands and forget it. And that's actually a part of their, their protocols. Exactly. To, to overwhelm the goyim, they call us goyim, uh-huh. Gentiles, to overwhelm the goyim so much with so many opinions mm-hmm. and pundits that you really can't make a choice. And so you just go, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm undecided. I don't know. So yeah. you can't really make a stand one way or another. Because it's confusing. And yeah. the, the ladies that I talk to out here, they feel the same way. It's like, who do you believe? Yeah. I, I feel the same way. I watch mm-hmm. the news and I like, not even the main, that's a bad example, but you know, maybe internet stuff and you're researching stuff and there's so many different opinions on mm-hmm. something and they kind of make sense and like, I really don't, you know, who knows? Mm-hmm. So you just kind of give up. Out. Yeah, exactly. Let it just fall where it falls, you mm-hmm. know? It, well, That's it's like Christianity now. It's like finding oh. that church that is LGBTQ sensitive or mm-hmm. accepting. It's like, well, I think that's great because we have to accept what, Because this, this dialect has been embedded in the heads now mm-hmm. that it's okay. It's just the people, have been, you know what I mean? Over yeah. and over again that even well-meaning Christians now are accepting of a sinful life. Mm-hmm. It's not that you're rejecting people who sin. It's the, com- the continuation of that mm-hmm. sin. But what's interesting too is that they, the people that I, I've listened to, they really do separate Jesus Christ from God the Father. Mm-hmm. That's what's scary. Because Jesus Christ is about love and acceptance. Where God the Father is the mm-hmm. one that wants to exclude everybody. And he's mean. Mm-hmm. And where do we where and we learned that not too long ago yeah. about Gnosticism. It's Cheesets. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's here. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's Cheesets. And you cannot separate no. Christ Jesus from the Father. He's They're the same. one. Mm-hmm. It's the same. It's God made flesh. So. And when he comes back, really he's not annoying. coming back all nice. <laughs> it is annoying. Okay, we digress. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> so. They come to the kingdom, got great orators, all right? What's amazing is that the majority of Americans have no idea that they have been stage managed according to a political plan which has been ongoing now for over two centuries. The American public educational system has done its dirty job of graduating citizens who cannot read, they cannot read or write enough to pay attention to what is going on. And this, this, I always harp on today's citizens are also not schooled in critical thinking skills. Mm -hmm. They're not. That's why they fall for flat earth. Mm -hmm. That's why they think Isaiah, they read Isaiah to to prove a point that the earth is flat instead of reading the word of God. Isaiah is, is, is not about proving a stupid theory. It's the word of God. Mm -hmm. Or you spend all your time reading Genesis to to, to, to talk about Nephilim and, crystal, and crystal skulls and mm-hmm. giants. There's a whole lot more to the Word of God than that. Because our goal is to learn about God, not about that other stuff. No, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's get off terrorism. 
What is what does the protocol say about mass media? This is mass, amazing. It's a uh, under protocol seven. It says we must compel the governments of the Goyim to take action in the direction favored by our widely conceived plan, by what we shall represent as public opinion, secretly promoted by us through the means of that so-called great power, the press, which, with a few exceptions, is already entirely in our hands. Okay, in eighteen. 18- 97 or 1901 when this is written all you had was the printing press Mm -hmm. and they're saying we already control it with a few exceptions right look where we're at now people Mm -hmm. 2016 tv's gone Mm -hmm. you have cable news and you have internet Mm -hmm. they control 100 percent of what we get that's right 100% of what we get. Every American, everybody globally, needs to understand that the entire national press is controlled. It's simply giving you the news you are supposed to have. Very soon, alternative news sources, I mean, including uh, internet websites and blogs and stuff like that, are going to be shut down. Mm-hmm. As the time gets close, I believe that 100%. Oh, yeah. And you've been screaming that for I, a long time. Yeah. That's why I say, you know, listen to the shows now, folks. I mean, get, buy the books now if you want. If you don't, don't. But they're not going to be up nope. for long. They've already marginalized everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I, with, with the Kapow radio show, I can only get to a certain level. And you can't, you can't break that, what do you call it? Satanic ceiling. You mm-hmm. can't, you can't get to it's the impossible. other level. Yeah. Unless I sell out. If I sell out, and I've had opportunity. Now, I haven't had opportunity recently, but in, but the, in the past, I've had some good opportunities to sell out. Mm-hmm. And this show would have been very successful. Mm-hmm. Very successful. And, and, and uh, so would a book, if I would have wrote it that way, been right. very successful. But um, I, can't, I won't sell out. Praise the Lord. It's not worth my soul. Mm-mm. It's not because I'm righteous or I'm so cool. I'm not. I'm, I'm a horrible, horrible, filthy sinner person. But it's... I made a commitment, you know, <laughs> because I've, I've seen the dark side mm-hmm. and I'm not going back there. No. So regardless, I ain't going back there and I'm not going to be manipulated mm-hmm. by witchcraft or anybody, any other person on Facebook or anything else having me compromise. I'm not going to compromise the message. Mm-hmm. Protocol five, in order to get public opinion into our hands, we must bring it into a state of bewilderment. That's so important, folks. Mm-hmm. In order to put public opinion into our hands, we must bring it into a state of bewilderment by giving expression from all sides to so many contradictory opinions and for such length of time as will suffice to make the average person lose their heads in the labyrinth and come to see that the best thing is to have no opinion of any kind in matters political. Yeah, and that's what we just said. Wow. That's what we just said. Turn on the cable news, Fox, CNN, God forbid, NBC, um, and and listen to all the political pundits. They'll have four or five, maybe oh, six I can't stand it. talking heads that all talk at the same time over each other and all these different opinions. And it's just like you're going, ah, rah, rah, rah. and one's making this point, one's making this point. By the time you get done, you're like, I, I don't know. See, because their their motive is not to present the truth. Mm-mm. Their motive is to tr- is to cause chaos and confusion. To do exactly what Protocol Number Five says: yep. a state of bewil- bewilderment, and you're just overwhelmed so that you have no opinion of any kind at all. Mm-hmm. Ah, just turn it off. I don't think about that stuff. I don't. Uh, you know, you can't. Your your head is just blown up. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what they want. Yeah. So you have all these talking heads that. That's all they're doing. They're just doing what the protocols of the learned elders of Zion have told them to do. They all work for these people. Mm -hmm. See, these evil, evil men or fallen angels or whatever they are, they know human nature. Mm -hmm. And they know that people aren't good. Yeah. Oh, they've studied us for sure. Yeah. They know that every human would be a dictator if they could. If they could. Mm Mm-hmm. That's why celebrities get sucked into being celebrities Mm -hmm. and they'll sell their souls for fame and fortune and for influence Mm -hmm. and for a million tweets. 
They will sell their souls literally for that because these guys know the buttons to push because humans are predictable. Yeah. It's a fallen state. Mm -hmm. It's a fallen state we're in and they know that we will do anything for power. I was like that. Mm -hmm. I was like that until God changed my life Mm -hmm. and it was a hard change. But until he did that, I was that guy that would have done anything anything for power and more money, Mm -hmm. which would get me more power and more money (laughs) and more influence. That's what it was about. Mm -hmm. I was that guy. Okay. So when you, when you combine the power of rhetoric that we talked about, the oratory rhetoric that they have, um, and, and listen to these people talk. I mean, listen to George Clooney talk. Mm -hmm. Listen to Obama talk. I mean, I'm just talking about Americans. I'm not talking about other countries. Listen to the way these guys talk. Putin talked and everything. They have re- they have rhetorical skills. Yeah, they do. So you combine that with the discussion of the mass media role, then you understand better the part of the plan that's coming up next. You ready for this? Protocols. Number five reiterated and protocol number 10. The principal object of our directorate consists in this. Check this out, Ms. Kapow. To debilitate the public mind by criticism. Mm -hmm. To lead it away from the serious reflections calculated to arouse resistance. Mm -hmm. To distract the forces of the mind towards a sham fight of empty eloquence. In all ages, the peoples of the world, equally with individuals, have accepted words for deeds. This Mm -hmm. is important. They've accepted words for deeds, for they are content with a show and rarely pause to note in the public arena whether promises are followed by performance. Mm. Therefore, we shall establish show institutions. Wow. How many times have you said the policies? Oh, well, he's political. He promised this. He promised that. He's going to do this. He's hoping change. And then, then they don't do it. Don't and then deliver. you go, how in the hell could you just lie like that? Mm-hmm. Plainly, people vote you in and then eh, you're not going to do it. That's why. The elders wrote this hundreds of years ago. Mm-hmm. They said that's exactly what they said they were going to do. All you know, That tells us everything we need to know about politicians of both parties. Mm-hmm. They are gradually trying to guide us into a new world order. They deliberately intend to debilitate our minds and to distract us through sham speeches of empty eloquence. They do. Yep. We certainly have seen and heard enough of this type of speaking to last us a lifetime, have we not? Yep. You could just put the name of any number of politicians on both sides on the aisle that fits this description. Talk, 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 and some more. <laughs> Is the motto of the consummate Politician, I mean motto of the consummate politician, right? Mm -hmm. The press was further supposed to fulfill a very basic need of this plan, the need for continued conflict. Well, they do that well, don't they? Mm -hmm. In order to bring about the plan change. Listen to this. Listen to this portion of the protocols. Do you want to read this one? Sure. The heads of the states today, there is a great force that creates the movement of thought in the people, and that is the press. The part played by the press is to keep pointing out requirements supposed to be indispensable and to create discontent. That's from Protocol 2. The press is supposed to keep us in turmoil because the authors of the protocol firmly believe that conflict brings about change and planned conflict brings about planned change. Since we are moving by plan toward the calculated change of government, a global dictatorial government historically unprecedented in power and repression, then we need a lot of planned conflict fed us daily. Wars, rumors of wars, class conflict, and many more tidbits of bad news floods our consciousness daily. And this is the plan. It's part of the um, Hegelian doctrine that was first espoused in 1823 by a Freemason giving Presser, Professor Hegel the concept. You've heard of that, the, the Hegelian dialect? Mm. That's what this is about. Mm. Keep it in turmoil because the because 
The conflict brings about change and planned conflict brings about planned change. Right? Mm -hmm. All the shootings. We need to take the gun. We need to restrict the guns. The guns are killing people. The guns, the guns, right? Mm -hmm. Planned change. This stuff's written a hundred years ago. My Lord. Okay. They want to establish a dictatorship of magnificent proportions. You want to read uh, protocol number five? Sure. These laws will withdraw one by one all the indulgencies and liberties which have been permitted. And our kingdom will be distinguished by a despotism of such magnificent proportions as to be at any moment and in every place in a position to wipe out any who oppose us by deed or word. Ain't that the truth? Mm -hmm. You going to go fight uh, City Hall? On a global scale, Mm-mm. they're going to win. What kind of laws is this portion of the protocols foreseeing that will withdraw one by one all the indulgences and liberties which have been permitted? Think about the Patriot Act. Mm-hmm. That's that. That is like the final undoing of all our liberties and constitutional guarantees. Mm-hmm. It really is. Think mm-hmm. about that. And then the government, CIA, FBI, NSA, everybody's spying on us, mm-hmm. using corporations, using Facebook, using, you know, Twitter, everything, backdoor stuff, getting all people. Look at Pokemon, getting everybody's information. Mm-hmm. Heck, at Vegas right now, they're having a hackers conference. Yeah. A hackers conference. It's despotism. That's mm-hmm. what's planned for every nation. Of such magnificent proportions as to be at any moment in every place a position to wipe out any who oppose by deed or word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one world government that they're coming to. This is it. Um, And that's that's I mean, that's that's some heavy stuff. So we, we went through a little bit of history and then we read some of these these protocols. And I think we're going to continue on with a little more history and maybe finish up with a couple more protocols from from the uh, the document. Um, what I want to say is that there, there was a first – historically, there was a first Zionist Congress that was headed up by a Theodore Herzl. Um, Subsequent Zionist Congresses were held on an almost yearly basis up to 1913. And like you said, that was World War I. It intervened from 1914 through, through 18, World War I. And then resumed again in 1921. The ideas and beliefs expressed in these protocols are so hideous and repugnant to the sensibilities of any normal person, as you, as you all know, we've been reading it, that the English translator, Victor E. Marsden, the guy who translated it into English, do you know he can only work on it? He can only work on translating Professor Nihilus's 1905 Russian version of the protocols at the British Museum, allegedly, for one hour per day? That's it. Due to its his revulsion with the concepts being promoted. Wow. He can only work on it an hour a day. That's so why I said after this show I'm done. I mean I've I've been reading this yeah, stuff it's and it's hard like to read this stuff and go, you know, this is a good day. <laughs> yeah. And you know that you're not powerless in Christ, but you can't stop this. No. And you're, it's gonna affect you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like something you're reading and it's happening somewhere else. Oh yeah. Just and to it's the not bad gonna guys. affect you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it, it it will. It does affect you. And it's hard. It's hard to, to, to stay on the outside of this stuff and not be influenced by the media, not be influenced by the worldly church, not be influenced by Pokemon, not be influenced by flat earth Christian people. It's, you know what I mean? It's hard to stand in that gap and go, no, I am going to be a God follower. I am going to be a member of the way. You know, um, J. Edgar Hoover, who's the ex FBI director, um, said this about the New World Order. He says the individual is handicapped by coming face to face with a conspiracy so monstrous he cannot believe it exists. And George H.W. Bush said, if the American people knew what we have done, they would string us up from the lampposts. Amazing. 
Amazing. Isn't that something? They know full well. They're all minions. They're all carrying out this stuff for bow down and worship me, and I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. It was the mm-hmm. same offer Satan gave to Jesus. The same offer. We are so fortunate that we had Jesus Christ of Nazareth exactly. as our Savior, who yeah. didn't succumb to that serpent. Mm-hmm. Amen. Praise Absolutely. Amen. We are so fortunate. I don't even know if we, all, we really realize that. We don't. And we appreciate really don't. that. Because that I he think became, we, would, we would behave differently. I think so. If that really he became knew. flesh and was tempted in, in, in this heavy way mm-hmm. and didn't do it. We are very fortunate. Very fortunate. Um, the demented individuals who embrace these concepts in the protocols consider themselves a special and separate category of humanity who were chosen by quote unquote God. Remember who their God is, yeah. Satan, to rule over all other men on this planet and establish a simple two tier feudal society. One with Zionist elites at the top and worker serfs below them. That's it. There's us and them. You are not them. You the was a great Gatsby mm-hmm. who said um, the very very rich. Mm, they're not like you and me. No. Okay. Some Zionists have admitted that they worship Lucifer. Michael A. Hoffman presents a convincing evidence in his massive one thousand one hundred page book called Judaism Discovered two thousand eight. He says that Judaism is a self worship racist pagan construct. A brash 29-year-old Zionist egotist, Harold W. Rosenthal, then administrative assistant to Senator Jacob Yavitz of New York, revealed in a remarkably candid 1976 interview with Walter White Jr., Hmm. who was viciously attacked and beaten on March 13, 1978, as a consequence of its publication, that Judaism is a Lucifer-worshipping cult. Here's what he said, quote, Most Jews do not like to admit it, but our God is Lucifer. So I wasn't lying, and we are his chosen people. Lucifer is very much alive, end of quote. In a booklet Walter White published titled The Hidden Tyranny, that's the one he got killed over two Mm -hmm. two years later. That's what he put in there. Rosenthal was murdered a few months after his startling admissions to Walter White Jr. in a likely Mossad-staged skyjacking attempt in Istanbul, Turkey on August 12th, 1976. Mm -hmm. So they both got whacked, right? Right. Um, The Zionist and Talmudist consider non-Jews disparagingly referred to as Goy or Goyim to be equivalent of cattle and therefore should be afforded no more concern for the rights of the subhuman goyim than what would grant to a herd of steer or sheep. We're just beasts. Exactly. You will notice that the strategies of dominance and control expostulated here in the protocol secretly taught among an elite Jewish inner circle in French Masonic lodges in the latter decades of the 19th century, such as the use of fiat paper, from Zionist-owned banks to replace currency backed by gold. Folks, that's a 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. America has no more gold. Have you looked at your coins? There's no copper in your coins Mm -hmm. anymore. There's nothing. It looks like Monopoly money. And then you have have a $20 bill, and it's paper, just like a $1 bill. Mm -hmm. There's nothing behind it. There's a reason. They've been hoarding all the gold. For all these years. Mm -hmm. That's why gold's so important to them. That, and along with the destruction of the nuclear family unit, have we seen that? Oh, yeah. Have you seen mom and dad lately raising their kids? It's destroyed. My dad used to uh, bag on my sister. She used to watch uh, Laverne and Shirley way back Mm -hmm. in the day. I remember my dad bagging on her going, they're destroying the family. Mm -hmm. He used to say stuff like that. I don't know where he got that stuff from. And then, of course, she'd say, <laughs> but he would say, that's destroying the family, Laverne mm-hmm. and Shirley. He also said the Beatles were going to be the root of this nation. Mm-hmm. And he was right. Why? I don't, know. I don't know how a... God told him. I don't know how a guy from West Virginia could, could know this stuff. Um, also, the control of the school curriculum. Have we seen that? Yep. The destruction of Christianity. They want to destroy belief in God. At the end of individual freedoms of any stripe, the creation of terrorism to frighten the goyim into clamoring for safety over the safeguarding of constitutional rights, etc., etc. 
Today, it's being followed and employed exactly, exactly as laid out by the Zionist planners in the 19th century. This is what's amazing about the protocols. Now, while Zionists and their agents are dispersed worldwide, the embodiment of the snake of Zionism, this is the symbol they use. Listen, folks, this is important. The symbol used by Zionists themselves to represent their world conquest mission resides with those who control the state of Israel. Really, I'm not being racist. I'm not saying anything against regular Jewish people. I'm talking about the elites. I'm not talking about regular people who don't embrace this global Zionism. But Zionists in control of that tiny nation have wielded enormous influence upon American politicians. Especially those with dual citizenship in Congress. Mm -hmm. Who in turn have burdened the American taxpayer with the cost of funding the strife, oppression, terrorism, all that stuff. All right? There is no lower limit to the degree of deceit, dishonesty, abuse, trickery, cruelty, or killing that the Talmud tells them that they are allowed to do or allowed to employ in order to achieve their goals of a one world feudal society in which merely staying alive in order to serve the Zionist masters and enjoy even one more day of life will be the only concern of the Goyim worker. Mm. All right. Um, That's some heavy, heavy stuff. You know what I mean? It Mm -hmm. really is. In the protocols themselves, you have... um, you have their basic doctrine, Protocol 1. You have economic wars, methods of conquest. Okay, Protocol 4, materialism, replace religion. Mm. Okay, I'm just going down the list here. Uh, depotism and modern progress. Take over technique. They read about worldwide wars, provisional government, re-education, preparing for power, the totalitarian state, control of the press, distractions. Assault on religion, ruthless suppression, brainwashing, abuse of authority, arrest of opponents, rulers and people, financial program, loans and credit, power of gold. That's heavy, that Mm -hmm. that protocol. Instilling obedience and qualities of their future ruler. Mm. They're, it's, 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 They're expecting an antichrist who they consider their king. I want to go back to the symbolic... Use of the snake. Last, um, Marcos's last show, he talked about the Ouroboros. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, the snake in a circle that's eating its tail. Yeah, he uh-huh. talked about the Ouroboros. That's what they use. Mm-hmm. That's their symbol. The symbolic snake of Judaism. Protocol 3, it opens with a reference to the symbolic snake of Judaism. Um, now, in his epilogue to the 1905 edition of the Protocols, Nihilus gives the following interesting account of the symbol. He says, according to the records of the secret Jewish Zionism, Solomon and other Jewish learned men already in 929 BC thought out a scheme in theory for a peaceful conquest of the whole universe by Zion. Mm. A history developed as, as history developed. This scheme was worked out in detail and completed by men who were subsequently initiated in this question. These learned men decided by peaceful means to conquer the world for Zion with the slyness of the symbolic snake, whose head was to represent those who have been initiated into the plans of the Jewish administration and the body of the snake to represent the Jewish people. The administration was was always kept secret, even from the Jewish nation itself. As this snake penetrated into the hearts of the nations, which it encountered, it undermined and devoured all the non-Jewish power of these states. Mm. Is that something? Mm -hmm. It is foretold that the snake has still to finish its work, strictly adhering to the design planned until the course which it has to run is closed, is closed by the return of its head to Zion. And until, by this means, the snake has completed its round of Europe and has encircled it, and until, by dint of enchaining Europe, it has encompassed the whole world. This is 
to accomplish by using every endeavor to subdue other countries by an economical conquest. The return of the head of the snake to Zion can only be accomplished after the power of all the sovereign of Europe has been laid low. That is to say, when by means of economic crisis and wholesale destruction effected everywhere, there shall have been brought about a, check this out, spiritual demoralization and a moral corruption chiefly with the assistance of Jewish women masquerading as French, Italians, etc., and blah, blah, blah. Morality. See, it's the apostasy. It is. And I can go on and on and on, but you know that snake is going through Europe. It's in, it's in the United States right now. It's, mm-hmm. it's coiling around everything. What do they say about gold, Ms. Kapow? Just read the first It says, one. in our day, the power which has replaced that of the rulers who are liberal is the power of gold. Time was when faith ruled. The idea of freedom is impossible of realization because no one knows how to use it with moderation. It is enough to hand over a people of self-government for a certain length of time for that people to be turned into a disorganized mob. From that moment on, we get internecine strife, which soon develops into battles between classes in the midst of which states burn down and their importance is reduced to that of a heap of ashes. The political has nothing in common with the moral. <laughs> nothing in common. The ruler who is governed by the moral is not a skilled politician. Do you get that? What they're saying there? Mm-hmm. And is therefore unstable on his throne. They're saying a politician has to be immoral. They can't have scruples. Mm-hmm. He who wishes to rule must have recourse both to cunning and to make-believe lie basically yes great national qualities like frankness and honesty are vices in politics and that's the truth it says uh these vices like frankness and honesty are vices in politics for they bring down rulers from their thrones more effectively and more certainly than the most powerful enemy such qualities must be the attributes of the kingdoms of the goyim but we must in no wise be guided by them Uh, How about might is right? This is what they believe. Our right lies in force. The word right is an abstract thought and proved by nothing. The word means no more than give me what I want in order that thereby I may have a proof that I am stronger than you. (laughs) That's some evil, evil, evil people. They're despots. Um, Check this out. They're despots. Here's what they say about the goy. Behold the alcoholic animals, bemused with drink, the right to an immoderate use of which comes along with freedom. It is not for us and ours to walk that road. The peoples of the Goyim are bemused with alcoholic liquors. Their youth has grown stupid on classicism and from early immorality into which it has been inducted by our special agents, by tutors, lackeys, governesses, in the houses of the wealthy, by clerks and others, by our women, in the places of dissipation frequented by the goyim. In the number of these, last, I count also the so-called society ladies, voluntary followers of the others in corruption and luxury. The abstraction of freedom has enabled us to persuade the mob in all countries that their government is nothing but the steward of the people who are the owners of the country, and that the steward may be replaced like a worn-out glove. That's the lie they've sold. You can you can overthrow your government. You can replace your government. It's not true. No. You can't. And that's what they're saying. It's an abstraction of freedom. It's enabled them to persuade all of us that we're the people. They're the, they're the, they're the government for the people. That was just Protocol 1. Protocol 2, um, oh, how about destructive education? Number Mm -hmm. three. Do not suppose for a moment that these statements are empty words. Think carefully of the successes we arranged for Darwinism, Marxism, um, Nietzscheism. To us Jews, at any rate, it should be plain to see what is disintegrating importance these directives have had upon the minds of the Goyim. So they're saying we're the ones who brought in Marxism. We brought in all Darwinism. 
We brought in evolution, all this stuff, Nietzscheism. We brought all this in on purpose uh, in, in the Goyam education to control them. Um, poverty is their weapon. They talk about all people are chained down to heavy toil by poverty more firmly than ever. They were chained by slavery and serfdom. From these, one way and another, they might free themselves. These could be settled with, but from what they will never get away, we have included in the Constitution such rights as to the masses appear fictitious and not actual rights. All these so-called people's rights can exist only in idea, an idea which could never be realized in practical life. And it goes on and on. Uh, how about this? They support communism. Number eight, by want and the envy and hatred which it engenders, we shall move the mobs and with their hands we shall wipe out all those who hinder us on our way. Mm. When the hour strikes for our sovereign Lord of all the world to be crowned, that's their Antichrist, it is these same hands which shall sweep away everything that might be a hindrance thereto. See, that's the ones that... You- you got to get rid of the ones that oppose the new world order. Mm-hmm. Just and that too has been foreseen. Yeah, obviously. The Goyim have lost the habit of thinking unless prompted by the suggestions of our specialist. Therefore, they do not see the urgent necessity of what we, when our kingdom comes, shall adopt at once. Namely, this: that it is essential. To teach in national schools one simple, true piece of knowledge, the basis of all knowledge, the knowledge of the structure of human life, of social existence, which requires division of labor and consequently the division of men into classes and conditions. It is essential for all to know that owing to difference in the objects of a human activity, there cannot be any equality. That he who by any act of his compromise, a whole class, cannot be equal, responsible before the law with him who affects no one, but only his own honor. It is indispensable for us to undermine all faith, to tear out of the mind of the goyim the very principle of godhead and the spirit and to put in its place arithmetical calculations calculations and material needs wow think of that folks a hundred years ago they're saying we're going to replace the god god and things of the spirit with material needs and calculations it says, in order to give the goyim no time to think or to take note, their minds must be diverted towards industry and trade. Thus, all the nations will be swallowed up in the pursuit of gain and the race, for it will not take note of their common foe. But again, in order that freedom may once for all disintegrate and ruin the communities of the goyim, we must put industry on a speculative basis, and result of this will be that what is withdrawn from the land by industry will slip through the hands and pass into speculation, that is, to our classes. We shall soon begin to establish huge monopolies, reservoirs of colossal riches, upon which even large fortunes of the Goyim will depend to such an extent that they will go to bottom together with the credit of the states on the day after the political smash. In order that the true meaning of things may not strike the Goyim before the proper time, we shall mask it under an alleged ardent desire to serve the working classes and the great principles of political economy about which our economic theories are carrying on an energetic propaganda. Mm. <laughs> so everything's a lie. Everything is a lie. Universal war. We must be in a position to respond to every act of opposition by war with the neighbors of the, that country which dares to oppose us. But if these neighbors should also venture to stand collectively together against us, then we must offer resistance by a universal war. Talk about arming themselves. Um, Jewish state is the super state. Christian youth destroyed. How about that one? We have fooled, bemused, and corrupted the youth of the Goyim by rearing them in principles and theories which are known to us to be false, although it is said that they have been inculcated. So they destroy the youth, destroy the Christian youth. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, principally into education and training as being the cornerstone of free existence. Um, that's where they infiltrated. In order to annihilate the institutions of the Goyim before it is time to have touched them with craft and delicacy and have taken hold of the ends of the springs which move their mechanism, these springs lay in a strict but just case of order, we have replaced them by the chaotic license of liberalism. We have got our hands into the administration of the law, into the conduct of elections, into the press, into liberty of the person, but into education is their big thing. We count upon attracting all nations to the task of erecting the new fundamental structure, the project for which has been drawn up by us. This is why, before everything, it is indispensable for us to arm ourselves and to store up in ourselves that absolutely reckless audacity and irresistible might of the spirit, which in the person of our active workers will break down all hindrances on our way. (laughs) You're all going down. They have the poison of liberalism. Oh, how about this one? We name presidents. In the near future, we shall establish the responsibility of presidents. By that time, we shall be in a position to disregard forms and carrying through matters for which our impersonal puppet will be responsible. What do we care if the ranks of those striving for power should be thinned? If there should arise a deadlock from the impossibility of finding presidents, a deadlock which will finally disorganize the country? Basically, they're selecting the presidents. Yeah, so your vote doesn't count, people. This was 100 years ago. How could you write this 100 years ago? And then today, you you see this, and so many people are going... I just posted a, a really good article on Facebook uh, this week about that. Mm-hmm. About every, how everything's planned. It's a stage. It's an mm-hmm. illusion. It, it just It's a soap opera. Yep. They're selecting whoever they're be. I don't know which one it is. I I keep thinking it's going to be Hillary, but she's so demon possessed and and satanically controlled. I I don't know if they can if they can even control her. Right. She's off the rails, you know. Ah, uh, okay. The president will, at our discretion, interpret the sense of such of the existing laws as admit of various interpretation. He will further annul them when we indicate to him the necessity to do so. Besides this, he will have the right to propose temporary laws and even new departures in the government constitutional working. The pretext, both for the one and the other, being the requirements for the supreme welfare of the state. Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And they're going to destroy they're going to destroy, 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 destroy. They talk about how they're the wolves. Um, they control the press. We talked about that a uh, a little bit there. But here's here's read number four on this protocol. Not a single announcement will reach the public without our control. Even now, this is already being attained by as much as all news items are received by a few agencies in whose offices they are fo- focused from all parts of the world. These agencies will then be ready entirely ours, will already entirely ours, and will give publicly only to what we dedicate to them. They talk about literature, journalism are two of the most important educative forces. Therefore, our government will become proprietor of the majority of the journals. This will neutralize the injurious influence of the privately owned press and will put us in a position of a tremendous influence upon the public mind. If we give permits for 10 journals, we shall ourselves found 30. And so on the same proportion, this however, must in no wise be suspected by the public for which reason all journals published by us will be of the most opposite in appearance, tendencies and opinions, thereby creating confidence in us and bringing over to us quite unsuspicious opponents who will thus fall into our trap and be rendered harmless. <laughs> and brilliant. Mm-hmm. Absolutely brilliant. Only lies printed. Can you believe that? They actually talk about only lies. Uh, it says, we shall have sure triumph over our opponents since they will not have at their disposition organs of the press in which they can give full and final expression to their views. Mm. <laughs> He says, we shall not even need to refute them except very superficially. Trial shots like these fired by us in the third rank of our press in in case of need will be energetically refuted by us in our semi-official organs. 
They control everything. How about we deceive workers? That's one another thing. Here's another one. We shall forbid Christ. At the same time, we shall not omit to emphasize the historical mistakes of the Goy governments, which have tormented humanity for so many centuries by their lack of understanding of everything that constitutes the true good of humanity, in their chase after fantastic schemes of social blessings, and have never noticed that these schemes kept on producing a worse and and never a better state of universal relations, which are the basis of human life says the the whole force of our principles and methods will lie in the fact that we shall present them and expound them as a splendid contrast to the dead and decomposed old order of things in social life. Yeah. Any real Judeo-Christian morality. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about this, this Judaism they do, this Hasidic, Kabbalistic, yeah, it says, Suggest. our philosophers will discuss all the shortcomings of the various beliefs of the Goyim, but no one will ever bring under discussion our faith from its true point of view, since this will be fully learned by none saves ours who will never dare to betray its secrets. Uh, they demand submission. This is pretty scary, this kind of stuff. Um, I love this. I, I, I love this one. It says, our legal staff will serve not beyond the age of 55. Yeah, huh, I wonder why. Firstly, because old men more obstinately hold to prejudice opinions and are less capable of submitting to new directions. And secondly, because this will give us the possibility by this measure of securing elasticity in the changing of staff, which will thus the more easily bend under our pressure. He who wishes to keep his place will have to ha- give blind obedience to deserve it. They also talk about we shall change history. Now, this is this is fascinating. Classicism, as also any form of study of ancient history, in which there are more bad than good examples, we shall replace with the study of the program of the future. Hmm. We shall erase from the memory of men all facts of previous centuries which are undesirable to us. So they change history, basically. Mm-hmm. Undesirable. And leave only those which depict all the errors of the government of the Goyim. The study of practical life, of the obligation of order, of the relations of people one to another, of avoiding bad and selfish examples, which spread the infection of evil and similar questions of an educative nature, will stand in the forefront of the teaching program, which will be drawn up on a separate plan for each calling or state of life. In no wise generalizing the teaching, this treatment of the question has special importance. They got another one here says, we shall destroy the clergy. Hmm. We have long past taken care to discredit the priesthood of the Goyim and thereby to ruin their mission on earth. Listen to this, folks. I know it's this is a long one, but listen to this. They've taken care to discredit the priest of the Goyim and thereby to ruin their mission on earth, which in these days, check this out, this is 100 years ago, in these days might still be a great hindrance to us. Mm. They admitted that the priesthood of the Goyim could have been a hindrance to them 100 years ago. It isn't now. So sad. Day by day, its influence on the peoples of the world is falling lower. 100 years ago, they said that. Freedom of conscience has been declared everywhere so that now only years divide us from the moment of the complete wrecking of that Christian religion. Mm. Wow. That's why you have to be followers of the way. Because it's they've wrecked it. They have wrecked it. As to other religions, we shall still have... Uh, Less difficulty in dealing with them. Yeah, they're nothing. But it would be premature to speak of this now. We shall act clericalism and clericals into such narrow frames as to make their influence move in retrogressive proportion to its former progress. In other words, they, they'll look like... I mean, how many times have you, have you read somebody on a comment, you know, on, on, on the... Uh, on the internet, it's like, oh, quit talking about that 2,000-year-old book or, you know, it's a dead, stupid religion. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, you know, regressive. 
This is scary. The king of the Jews, and that's not our Lord, okay? Mm -mm. The king of the Jews will be the real pope of the universe, the patriarch of the international church. That's what they say. That's their antichrist. Mm -hmm. The king of the Jews will be the real pope of the universe. They say, but in the meantime, while we are re-educating youth in new traditional religions and afterwards in ours, which is Satanism, we shall not overtly lay a finger on existing churches, but we shall fight against them by criticism calculated to produce schism. And isn't that happening now? King of the Jews. Let's just go. We'll end with this. Okay. They're king of the Jews. They're antichrist. Remember, written in the late 1800s. It's amazing. Only the king and the three who stood sponsor for him will know what is coming. In the person of the king who with unbending will is master of himself and of humanity all will discern as it were fate with its mysterious ways none will know what the king wishes to attain by his dispositions and therefore none will dare to stand across an unknown path it goes on and on it says that the people may know and love their king it is indispensable for him to converse in the marketplaces with the people this ensures the, necess the necessary clinching of the two forces which are now divided one from another by us, by the terror. I'm not quite sure what all that means. This terror was indispensable for us till the time comes for both these forces separately to fall under our influence. Maybe this guy's going to come and prevent terrorism now. He's mm -hmm. going to unite. Oh, the one of peace. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Let me read that again. That the people may know and love their king. It's indispensable for him to converse in the marketplaces with the people. In other words, he's going to be out there with the people. Kind of like what the Pope's doing now. He's one of the guys. This ensures the necessary clinching of two forces which are now divided one from another by us, by the terror. And then it talks about this terror was indispensable for us until this time. The king of the Jews must not be at the mercy of his passions and especially of sensuality. And no side of his character must he give brute instincts power over his mind. Sensuality worse than all else disorganizes the capacities of the mind in clearness of views, distracting the thoughts to the worst and most brutal side of human activity. The prop of humanity in the person of the Supreme Lord of all the world of the holy seed of David must sacrifice to his people all personal inclinations. Our Supreme Lord must be of an exemplary irreproachable. And then that's the end. It sounds mm -hmm. like there was more to follow, but yeah. That's all that, you have. It's a huge document, folks, but. <sighs> yeah. You can read it on your own if you'd like. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I mean, but. Just, just glance over it. Once again, go to educate-yourself.org. Anything to add? We'll okay. say good night. Good night.
rock and roll stars heard of spaceships that might come from Mars, fancy speeches from those leaders of ours were the teachings of men who still lie. But all I know is Jesus Christ and Him crucified for me. 